Welcome back Highlanders. This is Delaney Brown with your October Highlander headlines. I hope everyone has had a good start to the school year and we are back for our new show. Let's jump right into some fall sports updates. Boys cross country has been running pretty strong with Colin Manier, Francesco Petrosillo, JD Jones, Matthias Erickson, Mike Harrison, Johnny Basil, and Matthew Lombardo being the current varsity roster. Despite going 1-4 at a batch meet at Darlington, the varsity team took second overall at the Garrett Invitational and took third at the Brett Invitational. Both the boys and girls team took third at Garrett Invitational with Colin Manier setting a PR of 17 minutes and 17 seconds. The team finished fifth at conferences, but every team member came in sub-20 minutes. Colin Manier took seventh in the conference while Francesco Petrosillo took 14th and J.D. Jones took 25th with a record of 3-4. and four. The next meet is the county meet on October 28th and state sectionals are November 6th. Girls Country has been showing up in exceptional fashion with Lauren Fry smashing the competition, taking a first place medal in our Run It the Highlands Invitational, coming in second at the Brett Taylor Invitational at Darlington and setting a PR of 20 minutes and 10 seconds. She has been in the top 10 in, her, in six out of her 10 races. Other star runners include Emily Capola, who has been in the top 20 in four different races across the season. The girls' team had a second place finish at the October 12th Darlington race. They hold a record of 6-1 and one and placed second in the conference championship. Looking ahead, counties is on October 28th and state sectionals are November 6th at Garrett Mountain. Now let's check in with our Word on the Street crew. Crazy, might just turn around to 180. I ain't politic and I ain't kissing no baby. The devil on my doorstep being so shady. Mm, don't trip, we don't gotta let him in. Don't trip, hey, yeah. I let it go. But... Thanks, Delaney. I'm here with Dean Monty. Hello again, Dean. Very curious question What is your favorite animal? Racing horse. Okay. All right, I'm here with Bryce. Bryce, say hello. Hello. I have a question for you today. If you could, would you? I would. Why? Um, it's a great question. I really don't know how to answer that one. Thank you. All right, I'm here with Christian Haas. Say hi. Hello. So now, real quick, how old are you? I'm 16. You're 16? No, 17. 17. He's 17. And I believe you have a Tesla. Correct. How much did you bribe the dealer? A lot. A lot of money. I need a specific amount. Uh, like $4 and like 69 cents, something like that. $4 for the Tesla. <laughs> I'm here with Miss Botsalas. Please say hi. Hi. <laughs> so question is, if you could, would you? No. Why not? Because I don't know what it is. You heard it here first. If you could, would you? I never have. But would you? I did. Did what? That's for me to know you to find out. Nice. All right, I'm here with the class council president, Jackie Galella. Hello. I have a question for you today. If you could, would you? Yeah. Why? Because I can, so why not? You heard it here first. I'm here with the Mr. Sell. Mr. Sell, how are you? Wonderful. That's awesome. Now I have a question for you today. If you could, would you? Oh, I would. Why would you do it? Because I can. Because why? Because I'm Mr. Sell. He is Mr. Sell. I'm here with Tanner Christie. Tanner, would you like to introduce yourself? I'm Tanner Christie. Tanner, so you're a famous TikToker. Okay. All right. And uh, you recently just shaved your head. That's correct. Yes, that is correct. What is it like to have a bald head? Well, I mean, I've only had it for two days, and it's, uh, it actually feels better than what I've had. Okay. Um, what, uh, what kind of TikToks do you do, Tanner? So, I am a transition god, obviously. But, um, yeah, no. Transitions, that's really it, though. Oh, my God. All right, I'm here with Sam. Hello, guys. How are you? I have a question for you. If you could, would you? Now, of course. Of course you have to do it. Why would you do it? 
Well, the thing is, you're always going to have to do it because if you don't do it, what are you going to do? Nothing. Truly an inspiration. Now back to you, Delaney. Thank you, Ryan. For more on sports, let's go to J.D. Jones. Thank you, Delaney. Let's jump right into our sports stories with boys and girls soccer. The varsity boys have been struggling a bit this season to get their footing. With a 1-5 record, they did have a notable win against Passaic Valley, with Chris Albar assisting with two goals scored by Mike Rottenberg and Ryan Gable, which earned him the title of Athlete of the Week in September. The team celebrated their second win on September 29th against Passaic Charter with a score of 4-2. Two goals were put on the board by Ryan Gable, and Sean Moore and Charlie Beagle each booted one into the net. A third win came rolling in on Saturday, October 2nd, against Hawthorne Christian in the first round of the Passaic County Tournament. Lorenzo Galante led the charge with a hat trick, with one assist from Ryan Gable and two free kicks. On October 5th, the Highlanders clinched another win with a shutout against Patterson Eastside, with a final impressive score of 6 to nothing. Goals were scored by Chris Albar, Sean Moore, Alex Sanchez, Ryan Gable, Colin Madera, and Charlie Beagle. Senior night on September 29th celebrated both the girl and boy seniors. Looking ahead, the boys have games against Wayne Hills, DePaul, and Pompton Lakes. Make sure to come out and support them as they wrap up their season. The girls team is also not having the best season with a current record of 5-10. Girls won their first round of counties against Pompton Lakes with a score of 1-0 with a goal by Cassidy Clinton Shutout and goal props to Maddie Trout. The girls also had a standout game against Passaic Valley and another shutout, this one with five goals. Three scored by Maggie Spagnolo, Lindsay Whitner, and Georgie Barrett. Goalie Maddie Trout earned Athlete of the Week for October 18th after making her 100th season save against Wayne Hills. Keep up the good work, girls, against the upcoming Wayne Hills, Saddlebrook, and DePaul. The, girl, the current record of the girls' volleyball team is 8-8 eight eight for varsity. The girls have won crucial games, allowing them to possibly qualify for the state tournament. Star players and seniors Olivia Arsenega, Shayla Stillman, and Samantha Arujo have dominated the court with the support from junior Anna DeColiano. They hosted a large fundraiser in order to support the Susan G. Komen Foundation, and they were able to raise funds through a dig pink game. Supporters could donate money and pledge to donate based on the amount of digs in the game against DePaul. In the girls' tennis, the team has not been able to find success despite pouring their hearts onto the court. With Coach Infante out on leave, the team has been adapting to a new coaching style and continues to build their skills throughout the season. The team is pretty young, so next season is looking brighter, with four juniors ready to take the helm. The record ended with 1-10, with the Highlanders earning their first victory of the season against Passaic in a dominant fashion with a 5-0 match. Graduating from the team this year are Delaney Brown, Michelle Stein, Amy Zhang, and Stephanie Huang. Senior night was Wednesday, October 13th against Fairlawn, where the graduating players and their families were honored. The season ended with junior Jordan Keller earning the most wins on the whole team, senior captain Amy Zhang earning most dedicated, and junior captain Brooke O'Connor being the team MVP. Congrats to all the girls on the team, and good luck next season. Gymnastics have been very flexible despite the COVID restrictions and limitations. They ended with a record of 6-4 with the girls being able to clutch second place in the Passaic County Tournament, with standout performances from Joey Geisel, Ellie Vreeland, and Caitlin Lynch. It seems they managed to balance it all pretty well. The team won their tri-meet against Ramapo and Tenafly on the 20th of September. The team beat Wayne Valley in a meet with Ellie Vreeland, Joey Geisel, and Tiffany Santa Lucia, dominating the meet on bars and beams. The seniors, Abby Kasha, Caitlin Lynch, Katina Gloria, and Catherine Jonas will all be missed, and we wish them all the best in their future endeavors. And with them winning the second place at the counties. Field hockey has been fighting hard and boasts a 5-0 shutout over Wayne Hills. Scoring being done by Sophia Murata with a hat trick, and one goal each for Kayla Healy and Megan Van Kirk. Sam Krautheim came through with five saves, and Grace Syme also had a defensive save against Hills. Seniors Aaron Harvey, Sophia Murata, Kayla Healy, Grace Syme, Emily Hearn, Kelly Moore, and Abby Weiss have been dominating the field and have three games left in the season. Aaron Harvey earned Athlete of the Week for the week of October 18th, as she was a force for West Milford and helped the team earn three shutouts in one week. Their current record is 12-5 reflecting the hard work the girls have put in all season. Sadly, their county tournament hopes came to an end with a 1-0 loss in the semifinals of the tournament against rival Lakeland. But their season looks up as the Highlanders will move on to state tournament play. 
In football, the team had a huge, huge game on Friday against Passaic Valley on senior night. The team's current record is 3-4, and four. however, with a win on Friday, they can secure a spot in the state playoffs. Dylan Connors surpassed 1,000 yards on the ground for the second straight season in that game, and the seniors on this team have done an excellent job of turning the season around, facing all of the adversity they have gotten. That's it for me. Back to you, Delaney. Thanks, J.D. And for the last of our sports updates, the Special Olympics has just started their basketball season, and two athletes have made the New Jersey basketball team and will be competing on the national level. Congratulations to those athletes. Wes Milford is rooting for you. That's all for our updates on sports. Now let's go to Maddie Zondermeyer for our famous Mad Minute segment with Mrs. Allison Scully. I'm Maddie Sondermeyer. I'm here with Ms. Scully. Ms. Scully, are you ready for our questions? I am ready. Okay. First question. Which pumpkin spice flavored thing is your favorite? I don't like pumpkin spice. All right. There we go. <laughs> Interesting. Why is that? You just... I just don't like it. Never like pumpkin pie. I'm right. an apple pie person. Me too. Me too. Definitely apple pie. Uh, corn maze or hayride? Ooh, corn maze. And why? because I think it would be fun to just get lost out there. I agree. Have you ever seen the movie Signs? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. What is your favorite fall candle scent? Oh, um, the apple scent. Definitely apple. Tie in with that apple pie. Tie in with the apple. Um, candy corn, love it or hate it? Uh, don't really like it. What is your go-to? Butterfingers. Interesting. What is your favorite thing to do on a beautiful fall weekend? Um, gosh, a beautiful, sit around the bonfire in my backyard. I do agree. I like doing that. Apple pie or pumpkin pie? Apple pie with vanilla ice cream all the way. And why? Just Oh, because it's just nothing quite like it. Yes, I, I agree 100%. Um, when do you start decorating for Halloween? Oh, I started a week ago. So we're all decorated. Me too, me too. And last one, apple cider, cold or hot? Cold, ice cold. Yeah. Interesting. I, I'm a mix of both. I like hot coffee. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Miss Scully. Back to you, Delaney. Thanks, Maddie. In school news, the annual Spooktacular is on October 30th. Make sure to come out for the Trunk or Treat and Haunted Hallway slash drive through Trunks from many high school organizations will be there. Come out for a fun fall event. Also make sure to stop in the cafeteria and donate change to your class bin in the Pennyworth fundraiser for a domestic violence shelter. Each class has their own bucket, so make sure your class wins. Hopefully all of you Highlanders voted for your homecoming court. The winners will be announced at this Friday's homecoming ga game against Passaic Valley. So come out to the game to find out who took the crown. The West Milford High School Theater Department is putting on a fall play. They will be performing a comedic farce called Lend Me a Tenor, starring Mia Grizzuti, Aiden Becker, Tori Ivanchik, Jillian Abood, Connor Gargulio, Jason Pritchett, Abby Crane, and Jack Riley. Let's go to the auditorium with some of the cast members and director Heather Burns. Hi, this is J.D. Jones, and I'm here with Mrs. Burns and senior Mia Grizzuti. So, Mrs. Burns, could you tell us a little bit about the upcoming show this fall and what's the difference between it and the usual spring show? Okay, so we're still doing a spring show, a normal musical, which is what we always do. Um, but this year, we're adding in a fall drama. Some people will call it a fall drama because it's not a musical. Um, but it's actually not dramatic. It's very comedic. It's a comedic farce, which is kind of this absurd comedy where things that you think could never happen do. Um, and we're using it as a fundraiser for our musical. So we're, instead of just doing our musical that we've done for years and years, for the first time we're going to do a fall production to support that as a fundraiser. All right, thank you very much. All right, now, Mia, could you tell us a little bit about your role in the play? So I'm playing uh, Maggie Saunders, and my role, she's very innocent, and she is a 
very big fan of one of the other characters in the show. And um, she is very excited for what, what's happening in the play, is that there is an opera, and she's excited to see this opera star. And she's also um, engaged, kind of, to one of the other characters in the show. And um, throughout the play, you get to see, like, her and her development and her, like, um, her journey as the play goes on with that opera star and also with all the other characters in this very insane play. <laughs> insanely comedic and insanely, yeah, crazy play. <laughs> Would you say she's at the center of the comedy or the comedy is kind of all around her? I would say that she is, uh, I'd say that she's at the center of the comedy. That's what I would definitely say because she's just kind of surrounded by this insanity and all, I don't know if she exactly provokes all of it, but yeah, she's just kind of in the middle of it all. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So, Mrs. Burns, uh, when is the show and uh, where can we get tickets for it? Uh, the show is November 11th and 12th. That's Thursday and Friday night at 7 p.m. And tickets will be able to be purchased at the door and also on um, line at, now let me see if I can get the website right, wmtps.seatyourself.biz. That's the website, I think. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, very interesting to hear about what you guys have to say. I can't wait to attend. All right. Back to you, Delaney. Thank you, JD. It sounds like a great show. Make sure to keep your eye out on the district website or the Highland Echo website slash Instagram. And for the last part of our show, anyone who is registered to vote, mark your calendars. November 2nd is the gubernatorial election in New Jersey. You can vote at any Passaic County voting booth. Incumbent Phil Murphy is running for his second term as governor, representing the Democratic Party with running mate Sheila Oliver. Taking on Murphy is Republican Jack Chitterelli with running mate Diane Allen. The biggest conflict between the two candidates is the ongoing pandemic and the role the New Jersey state government has in handling the situation. Make sure to get out and vote if you are registered and visit the New Jersey Department of Elections website for more information. This has been Delaney Brown with the October Highlander Headlines. See you next time.